All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we will be taking more of your calls momentarily. But right now, as the polls, by the way, are closing in West Virginia, and we'll get your results as soon as they become available. Uh, and don't forget to stay tuned to uh, my buddy, my pal, and uh, the one and only J.D. Hayworth, who will follow me and be with you for two hours, an extended version of his show, bringing you uh, the latest primary coverage. Uh, but first, John Bachman joins us. Uh, and uh, John, I understand, and you know, we just had Roger Stone here answering a bunch of, a bunch of questions, but you're going to take a look at uh, Donald Trump moving to the left. Yeah, that's right, Steve. You thought that the GOP would coalesce around Donald Trump, not quite yet. In fact, there is a provocative question that some conservatives are actually asking themselves, some members of the Republican Party, what is in the best interest of the party itself, losing with Hillary Clinton or winning with Donald Trump, whose policies have, as of late seem to be all over the map? We do have one thing in common. What's the one thing? We actually do. Trade. It's not just that small piece of common ground Donald Trump has found with Bernie Sanders. He's definitely tacking to the left ever since becoming the GOP's presumptive nominee. The Washington Post even pointing out this week, quote, Trump is effectively running to the left, not just of his own party, but also of Hillary Clinton. That includes trade deals like TPP and NAFTA. A total disaster. And when Hillary Clinton recently tried to hit Trump for not wanting to raise the minimum wage. He basically said wages are too high in America. It didn't work so well. What she said was technically true, but more recently Trump left himself some wiggle room to the left on wages. You're open like to raising the minimum I'm wage. I'm open to doing something with it. Recently, Trump also said he remains open to raising taxes on the wealthy. Define as wealthy, by no, the way. Here is, no, let me, let me explain, so, somebody like me. Our foreign policy is a complete and total disaster. And Trump's America first foreign policy makes him seem more like a dove than hawkish Hillary. She recently criticized Trump for suggesting the U.S. should allow other nations to take care of their own nuclear defense. And he talks about it like it's some real estate deal. Oh, yeah, well, it's okay, fine, we'll make a deal. They can have nuclear weapons. That is dangerous. Also, Trump's longer-held left-leaning beliefs, like his support of Planned Parenthood, coupled with his more recent shifts, are giving pause to serious conservatives, some considering drastic measures. The Wall Street Journal's Brett Stevens even calling Hillary Clinton, quote, the conservative hope. The right can survive liberal presidents, he writes, but Trump will kill its best ideas for a generation. Still, Trump, who's set to hash things out with House Speaker Paul Ryan this week, seems committed to taking the grand old party in a brand new direction. But don't forget, this is called the Republican Party. It's not called the Conservative Party. You know, there are conservative parties. This is called the Republican Party. Here we go. Yes, they do. Well, Hillary Clinton is convinced, or trying at least, she's to not get outflanked from the left. Just today, she announced that she's now in favor of single payer health care. Steve, back to you. <laughs> All right, John. Good to talk to you, sir. We'll see you soon. Uh, John Bachman, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Back to your calls. And joining us now is the one and the only libertarian. And uh, the libertarianchick.com is where you find her. And also, you read her brand new book, Government Gone Wild. Uh, we're talking about Kristen Tate. And uh, Kristen, welcome. Let's get to some calls at 877-NEWSMAX, 877-639-7629. And uh, first up, we go to Jacksonville, I believe, and say hello to uh, Tony. Hello, Tony. Hello, Mr. Malsberg. How are you? Please, if you call me Mr. Malsberg, i got to call you Mr. Tony. Now, that's not going to work well, out fine. well. I, go ahead, Tony. I what? just do that out, I just, uh, do that out of respect. I under, I'm, only te was, I'm only teasing you. Go ahead. My question was for Mr. Stone uh, initially, and... Uh, the fact that he had Chris, you know, Chris Christie is even in Donald Trump's ear makes me nervous. Okay, so my question to Mr. Stone was going to be, you know, what role is Chris Christie going to be playing, uh, or what does he think the role is going to be uh, for Donald Trump? I mean, that was what my uh, well, I, you know what, he you know, would, he would, he. I'd certainly love to hear his answer, but uh, let me let me run to Kristen here. Uh, I, I think Kristen that uh, it's likely we know he's involved with the vice presidential search team. We know that there's talk about him uh, doing a transition, and we know that he's on the, a list possibly to be VP or Attorney General. Uh, I don't like the fact that he's involved with Trump at all either. But what do, where do you think he might wind up? Well, look, I think everyone's a little bit harsh on Chris Christie. I tend to like him a little bit more than other conservatives. I do not. Think I think Chris Christie will be the VP pick. He does nothing to broaden Trump's ticket. Both of them are, you know, from the New York, New Jersey area. They both have that bulldog attitude, but I think he'd be a great attorney general. Uh, 
I, I'm thinking that's maybe what uh, Trump has in mind. What but, about that, Tony? Would that satisfy you? Well, uh, no, not well. For Miss Tate, you know, I know you do a lot with in the university circuit and everything, and the young people, and they think it's great. But Christie would be a disaster in the college circuit right now because his, his everything that he's done educationally has been a, is a mess. And he, he's, the state of New Jersey is in a mess for it. It's going to be even worse. Hey, look, and that's what I'm worried about. New Jersey is a blue state. He was a Republican running in a blue state. I think, relatively speaking, he has done a great job. When your option is Chris Christie or a Democrat, I will take Chris Christie any day. Although, Tony, I'm with you. Chris Christie would never answer my question on the proposed Ground Zero mosque. He appointed a Muslim judge to the bench in Jersey, who at the time when the Fort Dick Six uh, were captured, they, he represented the Fort Dick Six, this, this now judge, and said, don't ever say Islam. Islam had nothing to do with this. And that's who he appointed to the bench. He doesn't believe in, and people want the that people want Sharia. He thinks anybody who mentioned Sharia is a problem, is a crackpot. So I, there are problems up to here with Christy. Uh, I'll have to talk to Kristen after the show. <laughs> thank you, Tony, and thank you for the respect, but call me Steve next time. Jeff from Santa Monica, California. Hello, Jeff. Hey, how you doing, Steve? I'm from Santa Maria, not Santa Monica. You know, that and was close. Bottom what? line is, um, Chris Christie would make a great attorney general. I mean, he's better, a lot better than all the other ones they've had up there. Bottom line here is Trump is real, okay? He's for the people, not for the politicians' pockets. And the politicians are scared to death because the real people are starting to vote. And everybody needs to jump on the bandwagon straight up. Dude. That's just bottom line. My, my roommate's uh, Navy SEAL is not active. And he's looking at what's going on, and he's just like, this is just unbelievable that these two parties are running crazy like this all because they can't buy Trump. That's the bottom line. They can't buy the man. Well, let me, man let me, let me ask people. Kristen a question, uh, and Jeff, maybe afterward you could weigh in. Uh, Kristen, the fact that he's going to uh, take contributions for the, you know, for the presidential run after he wins the nomination, does that change this in Mr. Independent uh, you know, push that he's made and position that he's put out? No, it doesn't. I mean, I think Trump has proven that uh, you know, he is not into this whole thing where people can buy him. He's proven that at this point. I think Jeff is spot on. Jeff, I totally agree with everything you just said. Uh, people love Trump because he's so authentic, and the Republican Party has got to come together. I'm sick of this nonsense from Paul Ryan saying, you know, he's not ready to support Trump yet. Yet. What more does he need to know about Trump? We already know everything about Trump. Maybe he's wondering if Trump will build a wall or if he wants to make America great again. Give me a break. It's time for us to all come together or else Hillary, a weak candidate, will win. Jeff, Jeff what about the, uh, the fact that he's going to take money uh, for the general campaign? What do you think? Um, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, look how much um, Clinton and everybody else is took in. Oh, no, I, of course, of all. course. But it's a change yes. for Trump. But if you don't have a problem with it. I for a living. Okay, fair yeah, enough. I drive trucks for a living. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. Jeff, thank you for the call. Thank you. Right, let's put up, uh, let's do the Twitter, T1 and, T, and, and T2. If we could do that, get that up on screen. You know, folks, you could reach us uh, uh, on Twitter and on Facebook. So if we could put up uh, the Twitter. Do we have that? There it is. There's the first one. Trump is correct. Politicians are all talk, no action. That's why this country is in the shape it's in. That's uh, at Rosario1. And then uh, at Chompa Rocks, Trump is distrusted because he's new to politics. Hillary's distrusted because she isn't. And then we go to Facebook. How about we put up some Facebook? I particularly like this one, folks, from, uh, from Betty in Phoenix, Arizona. Steve Malsberg has the best news show on TV. He's a caring, real man, not afraid to say what he thinks. I don't know why I like that one so much, but for some reason, I do. And then we could go to um, Howell from Knoxville, Tennessee. This woman, Hillary, is extremely callous and irritating. Can't wait for her ultimate demise this November. All right, more with Kristen Tate and your calls. We'll also do a Gimme Five. Uh, you're going to like this. We'll do the Gimme Five at the beginning of the segment, then we'll talk about it with you and Kristen, 877-NEWSMAX, 877-639-7629. And Donald Trump has been declared the winner by various networks in West Virginia.